We've all had it happen where we've lost a ball in the game or it gets stuck. Uh, just imagine being a magician, being able to drop one straight through the glass. One of the things I love about pinball is it's like a puzzle. It's like problem solving, you know, figuring out where to get that pinball on the flipper and to hit it at just the right speed to get it to go in the lane that you want or to hit that target that you're trying to hit. So I always love puzzles and um, I collect puzzles as well as doing magic. Uh, like I'm always finding new things to buy. Like uh, this is like a Rubik's little display, little advertisement card I got with one of the cubes that I bought. And notice the, uh, the cube at the end. It's actually, uh, yeah, comes right off the page. When I was a little kid, I, I enjoyed magic and I loved games and magic was my forte, but I did like to write and I liked to draw. Houdini was a big inspiration to me growing up. And so now I own the Houdini pinball machine. Uh, but I think the first one I ever bought was Theater of Magic. And I think it's one of the more desirable games because the play is just so much fun with the, the trunk, you know, getting inside the trunk and uh, uh, mine actually has the saw that spins and got all the cool upgrades and things and uh, then later in an auction I bought Card Whiz, which makes sense being a magician. My first love was cards. I, I mean, I even have my own brand of cards and you know, just uh, just for fun um, show off a little bit. You know, I'll show you something. Cards, let's say, have been in my hand since I was a baby, really since I was two. See the nine? Just give a little rub like that and it uh, changes to the ace. Um, but cards have always been my first love. I've uh, made a living with a deck of cards since I was 16. Uh, so I had to have Card Whiz. Uh, it's got a magician on the front of it. Upstairs I have a very like rare, super rare home game called Diamond Jim. That's my name. And it's a blonde guy fanning a deck of cards with a beautiful woman behind him. And so Houdini, like I said, was a big inspiration to me as a kid growing up. Uh, actually, I used to have my dad uh, chain me up and tie me up and put me in straight jackets as a teenager. So I had to have the Houdini pinball machine. He's always been a big inspiration. And still, when you name magicians, he's one of the top five that people can even think of. Uh, but he was also known as the king of cards. So here, I'll show you something. Watch. 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 Some of my other games are Wizard of Oz. I loved the movie as a kid growing up. And again, magician kind of theme, Wizard of Oz. Um, I've got the ACDC machine. First band I think I ever saw live. I was like 13. Still a big fan of their music. Well, now I have nine pinball machines. So you can imagine the investment that I've made in collecting these things and arcade games as well. In the old days, you could probably spend 100 bucks and get a decent machine. Nowadays, you got to spend a pretty penny. Uh, around $10,000 would buy a machine now. Helps to be a magician. So now all the old timers out there probably know what I'm about to teach you. Uh, you new timers to pinball may not know this, but in the old days when they had pinball machines plugged in, this game's from the 50s. If this was in a bar, they didn't want someone to unplug it. So they would be hidden in the wall somewhere where you couldn't unplug it. And they didn't want a switch that you could flip on and off because if it was off, they weren't making money. There's actually a bump switch to turn it off. You have to hit the bottom of the game to shut it off. And that's not a magic trick. That's a real pinball feature back in the day. So these are different puzzles that I've collected uh, different places around the world. I love gadgets and magic and um, let's see. I don't know if you noticed this pachinko machine uh, was actually this whole cabinet was built around this thing. When I moved into the house, I knew I wanted the pachinko machine front and center. Uh, it was one of the first games I ever bought. Uh, it kind of reminds me of pinball in a way. It's not a pinball machine. It's not as fun. Um, but in Japan, actually, they have pachinko parlors. And they pay 10 cents for each one of these balls to play. And if you go home before 5 o'clock in Japan, you're considered a failure in life. And so they go hang out at the pachinko parlors till it's time to go home. Um, so they look like they've been working all day. Um, more puzzles, more fun scientific toys. Uh, autographs from, from some of my favorite artists, uh, Hitchcock, one of my favorite film directors of all time. That's actually his autograph and a uh, little caricature that he drew of himself. I just want to show you something fun with a deck of cards. Uh, actually, for this trick, I don't even need the cards. Get those out of the box. I'm going to show you something with the box. 
and this. This is for hecklers. Watch. And stick it straight through. Now you would swear you see that going straight through there, right? It's actually an illusion. There's no way this knife could go through this box. It's impossible. I'll tell you why. First reason is there's a solid block of steel inside. So these are all different famous magicians that I've met in my travels. Some of them have become friends. Some of them have passed. Uh, this guy, Matt King, plays in Vegas. He's actually inside the Houdini pinball machine. I just found his face in there the other day. Uh, he's, one of the tricks he does is he spits out a live fish into a glass, and that's depicted inside the Houdini pinball machine. Uh, this guy, that chicken on his shoulder, he once pulled that out of my jacket on stage. Uh, Doc Eason's a good friend. He's probably one of the best card magicians in the world. Very funny guy. Uh, Channing Pollock down here was one of the first guys to ever produce doves. Uh, Di Vernon is considered the father of close-up magic. I read all of his books as a kid. Of course, David Copperfield, you know, everyone knows Copperfield. I've actually had the pleasure of hanging out with him many times. I've had hot dogs and pizza and hamburgers with Copperfield. I've bowled with Copperfield. Um, Johnny Carson is Karnak. Um, so yeah, um, we're, oh, Diamond Jim, this is a, a home game machine. This is a very, very rare machine. It's probably my least favorite game to play, but it's a machine that I had to have. It's got a blonde guy with cards in his hand and a beautiful woman standing right behind him. Uh, I bet there's only maybe a few of these in the world, and I'm proud to have it, uh, especially since it's got my name on it. Diamond Jim, my name's based on Diamond Jim Brady. He was a railroad tycoon. He wore big gaudy diamonds. I actually made a movie about him. Uh, but now when you Google Diamond Jim, I'm one of the first things that pops up, so I'm proud of that. If you're ever traveling and you see a sign that says, Beware of Pickpockets, do you know who put that sign there? The pickpockets. Because what's the first thing you do when you read the sign? You put your hand where your money is, so they know where you've got your money, and that's where they know where to hit you. And usually they'll double team you, like somebody will bump you and the other guy grabs your money. Uh, here we were just talking about North by Northwest, Reservoir Dogs, another favorite movie of mine, different celebrities and people I've met over the years of my career. I work in Hollywood a lot at the Magic Castle. Um, here I'll show you, we've got the, uh, King of Diamonds, pinball machine. Uh, another one of my favorite um, EM games. So, uh, one here I acquired at the last pinball festival. It's called Master Playboy. It's an old um, just, just grabby game where you try to get make a winning hand or get as many points as you can. But I just fell in love with the look of it. And it's fun to play. Well, as you know, uh, pinballs always making advancements in technology and they're always on the cutting edge of adding the coolest new things to their games. Magicians, we have to do the same thing. So take out your phone. Okay. Uh, we're gonna try something with your phone. I don't want you to think that I'm connected to it through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. so okay. turn all that off. All right. Uh, even put it in airplane mode. Bluetooth's off, Wi-Fi is not connected, airplane mode. Okay, cool, and uh, open up your calculator. And then make sure you clear it out. There's nothing in the memory. And uh, put in any digit uh, one through nine. It's okay if I see it. I'm going to see it throughout the whole thing. And whatever number you've chosen, you're going to put yep. that number in five times. So you have five sevens on the screen. Okay. All right. Let's so watch this. Everything's turned off. Yep. This is your phone. You chose the number. Watch. I take that first seven. Just reach up and grab it like that. Mm -hmm. Go straight to my phone. And we'll do it again. Just reach up and grab the next one. Boop. Just like that. Here, you can do it, it's easy. It'll take that next seven, let me grab it. Hold out your finger, hold out yep. your index finger, and just touch it right to the, oh, oh. I missed the spot. Um, what's cool though is if you shake it, it's like an optical illusion. You almost feel like you can see it going back to where it's supposed to be. <laughs> um, with sevens though, you can't turn them upside down because they don't make any sense. No. Well, kids, we used to spell words. So that'd be like right. an L. Right. Um, here, but if you bump it, see that can happen. Right. You don't want that to happen. Yeah, that's bad. Um, but I figured out a way to make them go back. Say when and I'll make them go back. Go back. Okay, watch, I'll blow them back. We'll turn around so it makes more sense now. Uh, I've learned that you can slide them across too. See if I can just slide that like that. There we go, slides across. Uh, here, I'll clear mine out real quick. And uh, here, we'll just make up a number to put in your phone. Take that same number and apply it to my phone.
And if you hit clear, go ahead and hit clear. See, I do the same thing. I take that zero and put it on my phone like that. Uh, and I think this should turn off the power. I take that same dark energy and apply it to my phone and it also should shut down as well. Nice. So I'm big into uh, the Hollywood movie monsters. So I'm a big movie buff. Love all the classics. And this is one of my favorite pinballs, the safe cracker. You're basically trying to get inside the bank to rob the bank. After you get inside the bank, the game happens in the head of the machine. And if you get inside the bank, something happens with this machine that happens with no other machine, uh, which makes this very collectible because they're, they're very rare. And that is, if you get inside the vault, I'm gonna let it die here, it will spit a coin out right down the glass that you get to keep and collect, and you get to play a, a bonus game, or just have a really cool token. Uh, and I have one here, this uh, very special. You only get it with this game here. Actually, uh, it has my name, uh, Diamond Jim. And here's my... Uh... Yeah, I saw like uh, Kinetic Art. Here, here's an old uh, skill roll. Uh, this is, when people come over, this is one of the games they seem to gravitate to. Uh, you just put a nickel in, and you're trying to get the maximum score that you can. So if you hit it too little, you get the 10, too much, you get the 20. So you gotta find the sweet spot and try to work your way down, get the maximum score. I think my high score on this is 420. It gets more difficult. Now we've got holes that you have to jump over. Oh, I hit it too hard, so I just lost a nickel. But it's very addictive. People want to just keep playing. Uh, over here we've got Omega Race, probably my favorite arcade game as a kid growing up. I used to go to Putt-Putt in Mesquite, and now that place is called Fun, where I buy a lot of my pinball machines. Um, but yeah. So that's one of my favorite games. It's kind of like Asteroids, but uh, a little bit more fun, I think. Uh, that's something I found on a, as a Kickstarter project, and it's an infinity box. You can look into it, and especially if you look in through the top, it looks like it just goes on forever and ever and ever. And last but not least, I have a Multicade uh, that plays, I don't know, I, oh, I think it even says 245 different games. So you've got a lot of virtual pinballs, uh, and actually some of the virtual pinball is pretty amazing. I mean, it looks just like the pinball machines. Uh, I don't think they're nearly as much fun, but I have this because it's got a lot of the old classic games like Centipede and Pac-Man and Galaga. So uh, I just love, those are the games I grew up on. Well, my father was a pool shark. It's ironic that his son turned out to be a card shark named Diamond Jim. Uh, I'm gonna show you something with just the four ladies, the Queen of Diamonds, they're right there. On top of that is the Queen of Hearts. It's important that you remember which one is where. Uh, red Queen's on the table, the Black Queen's still in my hand. I'm gonna turn them up so there's no confusion here, so you know what's where. What I'm gonna attempt to do without you seeing it, I hope, is to cause the Black Queen's to switch places with the Red Queen's. It happens fast, don't blame, watch. Just that quick. The Red Queen's are here, which means the Black Queen's are here. As a kid growing up, you know, I used to practice magic. And then when I was a teenager, I started doing it for a living. When I was 16, I did a lot of restaurant magic and paid my way through college doing that. Uh, my degrees in criminology and criminal justice, I always thought that I'd work for the government. And while I was interviewing with the Secret Service, I learned I had cancer, I had Hodgkin's disease. So I dropped out of school, took care of my cancer. And after going through all that, I thought, well, hell, magic has brought you this far. Why not see how far you can take it? So I wrote my first book, it became a bestseller. Before I knew it, I was traveling the world doing magic. Uh, now I've done magic in all 50 states, 31 countries. Uh, my seventh book on magic is coming out soon. I have about 50 products that I sell, gadgets that I sell to other magicians. Uh, the last three magicians that won America's Got Talent have done tricks that I've created. So magic has been very good to me. And so when I have extra money, I like to invest in pinball. <laughs>